Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Father. We love you, Jesus, for this wonderful time. Can you all bow your heads for a moment and pray and thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we love you. We love you, Lord, for giving this day. Thank you for our God enabling us to see 2022, oh God, Master. Lord, as a church, we glorify your holy name and we praise you, O oh God, for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah. We want to welcome you all for this online church, first Sunday online church. And we want to thank God that we conquered 2021. Hallelujah. And we are going to conquer 2022. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I want you all to join with us as we're going to praise God and worship God. Join with us wherever you are and sing and praise Him. Hallelujah. Let's sing this song. I want to scream it out from the mountaintop. Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing. Because you are good And I will dance Because you are good And I will shout Because you are good You are good to me One more time And I will sing 
because you are good and I will dance because you are good and I will shout because you are good you are good to me with this cry of praise my heart will proclaim you are good you are good in the sun or rain my life celebrate you are good you are good one more time with the cry of praise my heart will proclaim you are good you are good in the sun or rain my life celebrate you are good you are good and i will sing because you are good and i will dance because you are good and i will shout because you are good you are good too and i will sing and i will sing because you are good and I will dance because you are good And I will shout because you are good You are good to me You are good You are good, oh God Sing up to me And I will sing because you are good And I will dance because you are good and I will shout because you are good. You are good to me. Oh, Jesus, you are good. You are good. Heja vida Yeshu Masiha. Heja vida Yeshu Masiha. Gaye. Heja vida Yeshu Masiha. Heja vida Yeshu. Heja vida. Hey Jabida, Yeshu Masiha. Hey Jabida, Yeshu. Hey Jabida, Hey Jabida, Yeshu Masiha. Hey Jabida, Yeshu. Hey Jabida, Hey Jabida, Yeshu Masiha. Hey Jabida, Yeshu Masiha. Tu a valor, tu a kiri. Tu a valor, tu a kiri. Is dil ka tu baad shah. Is dil ka tu baad shah. Tu a valor, tu a kiri. Tu a valor, tu a kiri. Is dil ka tu baad shah. Is dil ka tu baad shah hai. Hey Jabida, Yeshu Masiha. Hey Jabida, Yeshu Masiha hai. Hey Jabida, Yeshu Masiha. Hey Jabida, Yeshu Masiha. Hey Jabida, Hey Jabida, Yeshu Masiha. Hey Jabida, Yeshu Masiha. Hey Jabida, Hey Jabida, Yeshu Masiha. Hey Jabida, Yeshu Masiha. And Hey Jabida, Yeshu Masiha. Close your eyes. Close your eyes wherever you are and worship Him now. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God, that could not hold you. Yes, thank you, Lord, that because of you we are victorious today. Thank you, Jesus, for 2022. We proclaim this over 2022. Death could not hold you The will tore before you You silenced the boast Of sin and grave The heavens 
heavens are roaring the praise of your glory your you have reigned to life again yes god you have no rival you have no equal now and forever god the kingdom yours is the glory cause it's the name above all names that could not hold you we'll tour before you you silence the voice of sin and grave heaven are roaring the praise of your glory for you have raised to life again you have no rival you have no equal now and forever Lord you reign for yours is the kingdom yours is the glory yours is the name above all name what a powerful name it is what a powerful name it is the name of jesus christ my king what a powerful name it is Nothing compares to this What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus What a powerful name it is What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus Christ my King What a powerful name it is Nothing can stand against What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus Once again Death could not hold you The will tore before you You silenced the boast Of sin and grace the heavens are roaring the praise of your glory for you have raised to life again you have no rival you have no equal now and forever God you reign yours is the kingdom yours is the glory yours is the name above all names what a powerful name it is what a powerful name it is the name of jesus christ my king what a powerful name it is Nothing compares to this What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus Yes, God Thank you, Jesus Jesus Nothing compares to this Yes God Thank you Father
You are here Mowing in this place I worship you I worship you You are here Mowing in this place I worship you You are here, moving in our beds. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in our beds. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. I worship you, thank you Jesus, I worship you, you are here, moving in our midst, I worship you, I worship you, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, church. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness. Touching every heart, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, healing every heart, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, you are here, turning lives around. Turning lives around I worship you I worship you You are here, you are here Mending every heart I worship you I worship you You are way maker Miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise. So we believe this, Lord, and we say this over this year. 
we speak this over this year father this is our confidence in you jesus even when i don't see it you working even when i don't feel it you working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you working even when i don't feel it you working you never stop you never stop working never stop come on church can you speak that out today even when i don't see it you working even when i don't feel it you working you never stop you never stop working never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you working even when i don't feel my promise keeper and you are the light in this darkness father thank you jesus thank you father and that is who you are that is who Who you are It may look like I'm surrounded but I'm surrounded with you It may look like I'm surrounded but I'm surrounded by you This is how I overcome And this is how I stand And this is how I interpret my situation God That I am surrounded by you Because you are way make miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my God that is who you are way maker miracle work promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are that is who you are yes that is who you are that is who you are is who you are. Thank you, Jesus. Give praises to the Lord. Sing unto his holy name. Make known about his work to all nations. Glory in him. And let the hearts of all those who seek the Lord rejoice. Psalm 105. Good morning people of God. Welcome to our good news table. I want to start with our first testimony. And this is from Jobin and Ria. They write to us from Kerala. 
And if you remember a few uh, uh, weeks ago, we had shared with you that Jobin and Rhea have been blessed with twins. <laughs> Amen. So this testimony talks about, you know, what had happened when uh, they were to be discharged from the hospital with their babies. Uh, they talk to, uh, they, they share with us to tell us that, you know, they had to reimburse the hospital bills and get the amount from the insurance company. But they were told because their babies were blessed with good health, the insurance uh, could not be claimed. Well, they, they, uh, they, they got discharged uh, and they came home. Uh, but this is what happened. They said that there was no way we could get the insurance claimed. But by God's grace, the amount was released to us and the insurance team were also surprised how it got approved. Amen. We are thankful to God for the financial favor and grace. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Ria, and thank you, Jobin. And uh, bless your beautiful children, Hazel and Daniel. We bless him in your name. Thank you for sharing your testimony. Brothers and sisters, the second testimony that I have here is from Sister Asha, who writes to us from Nerul, Mumbai. And uh, she shares how uh, she was going through uh, you know, some bleeding issues because of a fibroid in her uterus. It had been over 24, almost 24 days that she was bleeding. And then she writes that, you know, she had an opportunity to meet Pastor Derek and uh, some of our church members were also there. So Pastor Derek prayed over her. Sister Cheryl also got an opportunity to pray over her. And she was given a, 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 an instruction to uh, pray at home. And as she was praying for her, her healing to build an altar. Sister Asha writes that that day I came back, nothing really happened, but the next day I built a small altar unto the Lord. That night, the flow reduced. The next day, there was more improvement. And from the day, from, the, from, from Tuesday, the blood flow stopped completely. Amen. After 24 days, the blood flow has stopped completely. I thank my God for this miracle working God that we serve. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Sister Asha, for sharing that beautiful testimony with us and sharing how when you held out to, uh, held out to that instruction, released, and how building an altar in that instruction helped you get your healing. Amen. Amen. We serve a living, miracle-working God. And we claim, even as Pastor Derek, uh, this crossover night, if you were there with us, has declared over our people that this year, 2022, is going to be a year that is going to be full of health and that we will not fall sick in 2022. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm so, so happy. Thank you so much for sharing your testimonies. Brothers and sisters, if you have a testimony, please share with us. You can write to us on pursuehiminternational at gmail.com. God bless you. Good morning, church. Praise the Lord. We are so glad to be with you once again. And we want to thank our Lord Jesus for his great mercies and his unfailing love. Today is a beautiful day. And you know why? Because it's the first Sunday of the new year. And uh, happy new year to all of you who were not there on our Zoom call. We had a Zoom service and that was for new year 2022. And we know that this year God has kept amazing things for each one of his children. Like every year God has been upgrading us and upgrading us. And this year as you know the theme of this year that has been unveiled by our spiritual parents. Prophet Shaiju Matthew and Prophet Tini Matthew. And the theme for this year you, as we already unveiled it on New Year is Dominion. And we believe that for such a time as this, God has brought us into this theme because 
Church, I believe it's time. You know, the word of God says that those who know their God will do great exploits. But on the other hand, those who don't know their God shall be exploited. Amen. So we are not of the latter, but we are of the former. Where the people who know their God are now going to step out and believe his word and see miracles like never before. So this year, I'm very excited about this team because Conquer Church, it talks about our church DNA, that is Conquer. So dominion and conquering are, you know, very closely, closely related. They are not the same. Dominion has, you know, already you have the ability. Conquering is where you step out and take what's yours. You know, the Bible says the violent take it by force. Amen. And we believe that, you know, in every season, in every year, the Lord gives us a word and we've seen that as we have followed this word we have begun to see testimonies follow the word because the word is first published and then we believe it and then we begin to see miracles so believe this year that the limitations that have been put over your life by your own doing by other people all those limitations every yoke that has caused the limitation in your life shall be uprooted and removed because the anointing will break the yoke upon your neck hallelujah you know i love the theme dominion because it talks about nothing but a life of walking in dominion is nothing but a life walking in the anointing of the holy spirit you can have no dominion until you begin to walk in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So today's message is going to, you know, it's going to be based on our theme that is dominion. And I just felt like putting a part to it because there's so much, but I feel that God is going to lead us very strategically and very systematically in this theme. Because this being the first month, we need to lay some foundations in order to gain some victories. Can I have an amen on that? Can you shout amen? You know, until the foundation is laid right, we cannot build because if we build, then if there is a shaky foundation, things begin to fall. Mm -hmm. And the enemy is very quick to look at the cracks in our life, to look at the compromises, to look at the things that we are, you know, walking on and not paying attention to because everything is in the detail. This God we serve is a God of goodness, kindness, mercy. You know, throughout the Bible, without exception, you will find one theme that God has come to give life and give it in abundance, okay? You cannot doubt that. Abundant life is not living under your circumstances. You cannot live under your circumstances for a very long time, be it financial, you know, economical, you know, your physical, your emotional, any kind of situation. If you live under it for too long, it becomes bondage, it becomes a yoke. So you cannot be living under it and still having an abundant life. Amen. Bible says in John 10:10, 10, 10, the thief comes to kill, steal, destroy, but I have come to give you life and life in all its abundance. And we thank God that he has made a way for us. Amen. But we need to lay this foundation and i believe god has given me a word to share not only with you it's blessed me as well and as we are going into this new year be pay very careful attention to what god is saying to you okay because you cannot expect to have domin you know dominion over things over your life and yet not pay attention to god's word that is coming so let us pray father i pray in the mighty name of jesus Father, we thank you that every good and perfect gift comes from you, the Father of heavenly lights, in whom there is no changing like the shifting sands. Every good and perfect gift comes from you. And we believe that this theme for this year is going to mark a shift in our lives, Lord, because that's what you've created us for. That's what you made us for, to have dominion over all the affairs of life. Your word says, God, in this world, you will have tribulation. You will have negative reports. You will have things come from the, from the world, from the media, from your friends, from your office, from your boss, from everyone. But take courage. Ah, we take courage in you, Lord. You have overcome all of them. 
Thank you, Jesus. We love you, sweet Holy Spirit. We give you all access and all liberty to speak to your people. In Jesus' mighty name, take over. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. We had an amazing Zoom call on New Year and it was so beautifully done. And we got to see all your family members and we wish them. I pray God that they are sitting around the table and hearing these messages. In this year, I don't want you to miss even one message, be it the prayer huddle, the prayer calls, the fireplace, the, the, you know, the Sunday services, because these are the things that come and prepare you for the battles that are coming ahead. So we don't want to miss what God is saying, because we have shepherds who are spending a lot of time sacrificing altars to bring the word of God to you. So if you are lacking in any department, it is not because your man of God has not already brought the word to you. It's because we have not been able to receive the word with diligence and apply it to our life. Because God is faithful. God is faithful. He'll always bring the word before the problem. Amen. Amen. So welcome to the Dominion series and we're probably going to do part one today, which the Lord has led us to. So I want to start by just saying that God's plan for every child is to have complete dominion over the affairs and the works of his hand. We can see that in Psalm chapter 8. I'm just going to lay a short foundation and then we're going to go into something that the Lord uh, asked me to bring to all of us. So Psalm chapter 8, if you look at it, it says you have verse 6. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beast of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea that pass through the seas, that pass through the paths of the seas. And he's talking about man. If you read it, he's talking about when I, in verse 3, when I consider your heavens, the work of your hands, the moon, the stars which you've ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him. For you have made him a little lower than the angels and have crowned him with glory and honor. And then he goes to say in verse 6, You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. So God has made us. The original plan was that we should have dominion over all the works of God. Amen. That's why when you see Jesus who came on the scene and when he began to move, he spoke to trees, he spoke to winds, he spoke to storms, he spoke to demons, he spoke to the earth, he spoke to everything and it responded. Can I tell you, child of God, that everything that you, that God has given us, responds to your voice. You got to believe it. Everything that God has given on this earth responds to the voice of God that is within you. That's why it is so important to walk by faith and not by sight. Because you cannot afford to walk by sight and expect things to change in your life. That's why our theme word 1 John chapter 5. Our theme is 1 John chapter 5 where he says, This is the, you know, who is it that overcomes the world? And then he says, this is the victory, even our faith. Amen. So remember, everyone who is born of God overcomes the world. And then he says, this is the victory that we have, even our faith. So the way we get victory in every area is when we understand that God has given us dominion. We need to start walking in it. And how do we walk in it? We walk in it by faith. So when I was thinking about this, you know, I began to think that, you know, just to give us a summary, remember this, that man lost his anointing, lost the glory in the garden. The anointing is basically God's presence, his power, his dominion and the power on, on a person's life to reign and rule in this life. So this is what Adam and Eve had. They had complete dominion because God gave it to them right in Genesis chapter 1. Uh, you can see that over here when he, he made man, when he made Adam. God says over here, 
in 128 genesis 128 then god blessed them and said to them be fruitful and multiply fill the earth and subdue it have dominion over the fish of the sea the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth this is more or less talking to the same scripture in psalm chapter 8 that we just wrote just we just read 1 John chapter 5 verse 4 Everyone who, born, who is born of God conquers this world and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So we all know that there's plenty evidence. We've seen it in Jesus' life, in Paul's life and we've seen it in the disciples' life. How, you know, you can read Hebrews chapter 11. It's full of people conquering, having dominion in different aspects. You know, whether it was in, in military, whether it was in their personal life, whether it was over circumstances, whether it was kings, it was rulers, everyone had to bow to the presence of God. We saw Elijah calling down fire. We saw many miracle thing, miraculous, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, situations where the power of God bought dominion. And that was always through a man. So... This is very critical that we understand. If dominion is not happening in your life, if you are not the head and you are the tail, if somebody is over you as a master, if somebody who is not supposed to be there is currently over you, if you are the victim right now, it is not because God wants it. It's because you have allowed it. And this is very, very important. God's original plan you know, is to bless his children. I cannot tell you while I was in prayer, I saw it so clearly. I heard literally the words of God. I saw him sitting and looking at men who were who have dug a pit for themselves or who have been put in a pit. And I saw the father thinking every day, how can I take this man from the pit to the throne and put him on the throne? Why? This was the same story of Joseph. His brothers dug a pit and put him in. But God found a way to remove him from the pit and put him on the throne. But many of us, instead of walking according to God's ways and cooperating and partnering with God, because God has a way and he's not going to change it. So if we want to have dominion and we're saying we're going to have it our way, our way, or we are going to do what we feel, it's not going to happen. That's why it's very critical in this month, in the next two, three months, that we follow all the instructions, not just hear it, but begin to realign our life. And one instruction is coming to you today. So I want you to really walk with us in this journey, okay? Because I'm excited about what God is going to do and what, has, what He's done in our life. And I'm waiting to begin to have miracles of dominion of people getting breakthroughs and setting being set free from the limitations that have held them back in 2021 so we see i i remember seeing this and the lord was showing me how he wants to remove children many of us who are stuck in a pit i'm repeating again many of us who are stuck in a pit some have dug it some are digging it deeper and his only aim is to put you on the throne. But because of our rebellious ways, instead of allowing God and humbling ourselves, we are trying to dig a way out. And guess what? The more we dig, the deeper we go. Because there's only one way and it's God's way. May you cooperate with the laws of God. May you cooperate with the instructions of God that come into your life. Because I believe there is nothing more greater than God wanting you and I to have dominion and reign in this life, in this season, because this is the prophetic word that has been released in the heavens and on the earth. Amen. Can you shout amen? Say, I'm going to have dominion. The things that have held me are no longer. The chains are breaking. The, the disappointments are leaving. The victim mentality is going. Thank you, God. You made me more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. You know, that scripture comes to me. He says, for if by the sin of one man, death reigned, to, death reigned through one man, if for by the trespass of one man, or by the sin of one man, death reigned through one man, to all men. How much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the free gift of righteousness reign in this life through the one man, Jesus Christ? I believe that's Romans 5.8. Uh, so God wants us to reign. 
reigning with Christ is not in the afterlife, in this life. In this life, that scripture says, in this life, reigning in this life with the one man, Jesus Christ. Shout Amen if you are receiving this in the mighty name of Jesus. So I saw this and I was really, you know, taken aback because, you know, if you see a father and he's seeing a son or he's seeing a daughter struggle in life, the only aim of the father is to make sure that the daughter gets out of the pit that she's in. And this is your father's heart. I want you to know, this is the father's heart. He's every day wakes up with only one agenda. How do I get my child out? Of the wrong way, of the wrong road, of the wrong thinking, out of the wrong association so that I can bring that child back onto the path that leads to the throne. So I pray that you will be diligent to hear the voice of the Lord. You know, the Bible tells us in, uh, he tells us in his word, in Psalm 27, yeah, let's go to Psalm 27. That has been a scripture that has just uprooted everything in my life. And I've been sharing it with all our people on the prayer call. And we had an amazing time yesterday night. But I want to share it with you also. Psalm 27, 4. Make sure this verse becomes your verse for this year. Okay, for this year. Because it has all the ingredients of having dominion. He says, one thing I have desired of the Lord. One thing. You know, and I stressed as the Lord told me. Church, we've had many people do many things. All of us have done many things. But God is asking you in this season, one thing. Just one thing, I want you to consider after doing all the things, has your life progressed? After doing all the multitasking, doing all the desires at the same time, has anything changed? It's time we've come to one thing, just one thing, one thing, one desire. And this desire needs to be in your heart, <laughs> hallelujah. Not in your partner's heart, not in your neighbor's heart, it needs to be in your heart. That means you need to realize that there's only one thing there is to be desired. Because I'm going to show you, if you desire this one thing, what's going to happen to you? In this very year, you are going to break out over every limitation that had the enemy has placed in your life. Because It's because of this one thing, one desire. There has not been one desire to run after the Lord, to pursue Him. Because look what the Lord says. One thing have I desired, that who will seek, I will seek. So he's saying the desire is good. You need the desire. And some of us need to pray. If you don't have the desire, can I urge you that ask the Holy Spirit, cry out to the God because you need this desire. Remember, one of the reasons we are not having dominion is because there are many other desires and they are all stuck in our heart. And remember, the Bible says all the issues of life flow from the heart. So you cannot get past your heart. If your heart is filled with many desires, you just, after having all the information, you will still be struggling in manifestation. Amen. So one thing have I desired, and then he says, this will I seek after or I will pursue. And then he says, what is this desire? To dwell to dwell in the house of the Lord, to behold His beauty or gaze on His beauty, to behold His beauty, the Bible says. And then He says to inquire in His temple. And you know, when I went to this, I went uh, to look at the, the Hebrew, I was just amazed. I want to read it to you so that you understand. It's not just, you know, these words are just not used uh, you know, lightly, I want you to see the weight on these words. One thing I have desired, this will I seek, that I may dwell. And when I look at the, the Strong's interpretation of what dwell is, you know what dwell is? It means to sit, to be quiet. It means to inhabit. It means to be set in something. I just love this word. It means to remain. You know, the Bible says, remain in me and I will remain in you. 
and then he says ask of me anything and it will be done so to remain to dwell to inhabit to be fixed the next word so remember the first one is one thing i have desired this will i seek to dwell so the first key to dominion is to dwell the next is to behold and you're going to be amazed at this this same word kaza okay it's 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 translated as kaza okay and this is what the word behold means are you ready it means to see as a seer in the ecstatic state can you believe it this literally means how many of you want the blueprint for your life it's here it's to behold it's not just standing and looking in you know into an empty sky no it's to see like an ecstatic seer like a seer who can see his whole life who can see the glory of god it's not just looking into space and saying great 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 i i saw something move i saw some cloud no 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 it is to look with definitive detail look what more definition is there to see to perceive with intelligence to see by experience wow i just love this so he's telling you that this word which is pronounced as kaza is not just to behold it is to see as a seer to perceive with intelligence and there are some other words also it says you have to behold to see to see it so look at this just these words to see as a seer to perceive with intelligence to behold so the first one is one desire that will i seek so one desire the critical thing is first just one desire this year can i ask you this month can i ask you to just have one desire you know every time we come to god we have so many desires god give me this god give me that make this happen make this happen. god did everything okay and how do we have dominion are we walking in victory or are we still ensnared are we still fallen down and yet our request are even more this is the reason this is the reason brothers we need one desire just one desire and that no one else is going to seek you and i will need to seek after and what is that desire to dwell to remain you know i shared with the group the other day in isaiah chapter 64 Ah that's such a beautiful verse that took my heart you know to remain it's such an important thing to remain hallelujah look at this isaiah 64 verse 4 for since the beginning of the world men have not heard nor perceived by the ear nor has the eye seen any god besides you who acts for those or who acts for the one who waits on him to dwell dwelling means waiting to remain waiting and this god doesn't say just remain remaining doesn't mean just sitting and staring at space it means waiting expectantly waiting with faith you know the bible also said those who wait upon the lord that word faith that word wait if i can bring it up right now and explain it to you he says that Have you not heard do you not know that our God is the everlasting God it's in Isaiah uh, 40 is the God of heaven and earth and he says you know he does not grow weary nor does he faint and then he goes to tell you that young men stumble and fall and then he goes on to say is yeah he, he says in verse 28 has thou not known has thou not heard that the everlasting god the god of the creator of heaven and earth fainteth not nor is weary there is no searching of his understanding now he goes to say he gives power to the faint and to them who has no might he increase it strength now he goes to say even you shall faint and be weary and young men shall utterly fall but they that wait and when you click that word wait upon the lord they shall renew their strength and they shall mount up on wings of eagle when you look at that word wait it's not just sitting down and doing nothing it says the word here is again 
it's translated as kava and the word means literally to wait to look for hope expect to wait or look eagerly for this is nothing but faith this is nothing but hope that is expecting remember faith is the substance of things hoped for it's the substance of something that you're hoping for expectantly not depressingly not doubtingly not waveringly but expecting knowing that it's going to come any time because you are fully persuaded that the god who promised you is fully able to bring it to pass in your life can you shout an amen i want you to see how these words are all connecting so the next time you read Isaiah and you say those who wait upon the Lord don't think it's just sitting and waiting for God to do something no it's talking about an eager expectant hope and that eager and expectant hope is tied up to Hebrews chapter 11 where he says faith is the substance of hope that hope is not just a hope that beggars have that one day I'll be a king it's not that kind of hope it's not a kind of hope oh I just hope that you know this sickness will go no 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 it's a hope that has done its research it's a hope that has done its full understanding of what God has said in its word and now against all hope Abraham hoped Abraham looked at his body it was dead looked at wife's body womb dead he looked at his age disqualified but he had a promise and when he looked at that promise against all hope in hope Abraham believed and why did he believe because he did not waver through unbelief because he was fully persuaded that he who promised had the full power to bring it to pass in his life that means you don't need to be physically qualified you don't need to be physically genetically anything if there's anything missing in your body if you're not you know fully qualified you're not of noble birth you are not with wisdom not with skill not with strength it doesn't matter as long as you are fully persuaded through the study of the word and hope has come now which is eager and expectant and hope that is a waiting kind of hope of a manifestation that has to appear that faith that hope is substance and that substance is faith i hope you're getting it i hope you're getting it so i don't want you the next time you read these words to just think those who wait upon the lord shall renew their strength and then you read it and say god i waited on you and there was no strength how were you waiting were you just waiting and sitting and expecting a garment to fall on you or were you eating the word up and shouting at your mountain and saying today you may be standing tall but tomorrow I shall stand upon you and bring you down every valley shall be raised and every mountain shall be brought down and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed the rugged places shall be made smooth saith the Lord of hosts hallelujah that's the way we fight our battles we fight our battles on promises that god has given us just like we like abraham stood on that promise and you know what abraham did the, he believed that just as god calls the things that are not as though they are he could do the same thing so abraham believed that what could not be done he believed that he will be a father of nations and that's why the bible says god credited to him as righteousness and he received the promise because he was fully persuaded write this word down fully persuaded you need to be fully persuaded that word is in romans chapter 4 abraham was fully persuaded we have a lot of people in the church who are fully persuaded about the sms's they get the whatsapp they get the media they get do you know just before i could even record this i got at least three messages of people telling me how the doctor's report that has come is not good and i began to think if a report that comes from a man makes us believe that there is a problem in our bodies why is it that we do not get into this report card and believe that the god who made heaven and earth including these bodies and the whole universe has given us a solution why is it that we cannot believe why is it that we cannot believe i can tell you why it's because we have not been fully persuaded we spend a lot of time everywhere else except here 
but this year is the year to be fully persuaded there can be no element of doubt that means you need to be like a berean christian search it out find it out look it up be sure don't say my pastor said no you cannot rely on that until you search it out and then say i know my pastor said it you need to make every word and promise of god a rock under your foot so that when the wind blows when the waves come you stand on the rock and that house won't move in jesus mighty name when everything is crying out that it's going to be broken your house will stand hallelujah hallelujah i thought that was good i was thought thank you jesus for bringing that to us amen 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 let me go back here hallelujah hallelujah so remember god wants us god wants us as in psalm 27 number 1 to one thing i desire one thing i desire there's only one desire and then he says that will i pursue my god i'm telling you when i'm saying that word one thing i desire i can see so many people the reason you are where you are is because your heart is filled with many desires and can i encourage you that this year can you forget about all your desires listen child of god if you make god one desire if you make him your desire do you know what is going to happen what does the bible say that you dwell that you behold and that you inquire i told you what is behold behold is to look have an encounter have a ecstatic seer visitation where you can see you can see things before they come let me just expound on that because that will give you clarity that will give you clarity amen let me just expound on that why this verse is so critical for dominion so i finished telling you that dwell behold and inquire now this is the reason why you need to have that one desire and these are the reasons why to remain in christ that is to dwell to behold that is to see the plan that god has for our life now real time before the enemy can and to inquire that means to go and find out to search out things that you know search out things in the word of god to search out the mind of god and this is the mind of god but we need to search it out to inquire in his temple remember david is writing this when there was not a bible in place there was just the torah now we got the whole bible we got the prophetic word with us we need to search it out to inquire that's why the desire to seek god is very important because it will allow you to remain in him it will allow you to see what he sees for your life and have encounters and visitations and the next one is you'll be able to be fully persuaded because you are searching it out now look at verse 5 for in the time of trouble and trouble is coming okay don't come crying later i'm telling you trouble is coming 2022 is not the years of miracles for everybody it's the year of dominion for the diligent dd amen for in the time of trouble now look at this he shall hide me in his pavilion mam prada sakarayata yeah supernatural protection now look at this in the secret place of his tabernacle he shall hide me and he shall set me high upon a rock right there say advantage type in your bible advantage do you know when god hides you and that sets you high above on a rock do you know what happens verse 6 Now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. This is the aerial view you will have on your enemy to see all the limitations that he put on you whereas before you could never see it. Do you know many people why they are not moving in dominion? Is because they have not dwelt, they have not gazed or they have not beheld and they have not inquired. That's why they don't know how their enemy has trapped them but when you do these things and have that desire this is what god says i'll hide you in my pavilion and i'll set you up on a rock and guess what when god raises you up and sets you in high places the first thing that you get to see you know what it is 
you get to see the plans of the enemy that have been hidden all along your life. Now you get to know why the poison is. Who set the poison in your family? Who put the relationships bad? Who, why is it that you're always falling in the same area? What is the event that triggered in your life that now you are walking in the same weakness? What is that addiction? What is its source? Because now you see the plans of the enemy. Look here what he says. Now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Ah, that is a place you want to be in 2022. Listen, child of God, you will have tribulation. There is no doubt about it. Tribulation is coming. But it is very sad when a child of God doesn't know what to do when something happens. Do you remember Jesus in the boat and the disciples screaming? And what was Jesus doing? Sleeping. Why could he sleep when there was a storm raging and his 12 disciples who were fishermen mostly and who knew when it was a fierce storm they would have not cried for one small little you know squall or a small little wind they knew this was a dangerous storm it, it, the, the boat could capsize and they're thinking oh, he's sleeping why do you think Jesus could sleep because he was raised high and he could already see that we are coming on the other side there's nothing to worry these guys can handle it listen I'm telling you you will never be able to handle the problems life brings you and the enemy tries to put on you if you do not have a higher vision, a higher insight, a higher ground from where you are able to see what the enemy is trying to do. Because otherwise you will be hitting everything and you will be missing. Because remember, we want to be hidden in his pavilion and we want to be in the secret place, elevated upon the rock so that we can see and know exactly why this battle is coming to you. Should I even engage in this battle? What should I do? How should I win this? I'm telling you, it's, it's amazing. You ever played hide and seek? You know, when you're on the ground, it's very hard to catch somebody. But you go up to the terrace and watch from up. You'll be able to see every one of all your friends hiding in places because now their hiding places are uncovered. May that be your dwelling place in 2022. May you know the reason of your affliction. May you find out and investigate the reason of your trauma. May you find out, may God show it to you as you have one desire and that you pursue. I don't know how we miss this. You know, all our lives, I've, I've heard only Christians ask for one thing. They've asked for everything except this one desire. I've never heard a person come to me and say, Pastor, how do I make, just have one desire to seek God? No one has ever asked that question. <laughs> Yet, just asking that question solves your whole life's problem. Because I told you, you get to dwell. You get to behold. That means see the whole blueprint. You get to remain. That means you, when you pray, prayers get answered. You know, the Bible says, remain in me and I'll remain in you. Ask whatever you want and it will be given to you if my words abide in you. So when you are abiding, when you are when you're dwelling in God, prayers get answered. Do you know how many people pray and their prayers don't get answered? It's because they have not learned the secret to remain in God. When you remain in God, conversations with God become covenants with God. Your prayers don't get answered because of your fancy quotations of the Bible. They get, ans they get answered because of the life that is surrendered at the foot of Jesus. Remember this, prayers do not get answered because of what you've said and how well you said it and how well you quoted it. It's because of the life that has been dwelling in the presence of, the God, of God. That is why prayers get answered. That is why the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The next thing is dwelling, gazing, beholding. That means you get the blueprint for your life. My God, that will solve so much wasted time. 
so much wasted time in the kingdom is only trying to find out whether I have to do this, take this thing, do that thing, should I go here, should I go there, all the wrong associations, we break it in the mighty name of Jesus. May you get the blueprint, the ecstatic encounter of a seer. It's written there and it's not written, it's only for the seer, it's for you, child of God. You need to know the next 20 years, next 40 years, what you need to do so that your life becomes flint focused. And the last one is to inquire future events. Yes, Lord, what is happening in my city, in my country, in my company? How do I solve? How do I become a Joseph wherever you have put me? How do I become a Daniel to solve the king's problems? Because now I have learned to dwell. I have learned to gaze, to behold. And now when I inquire, I receive direction. So I thought this is very important to take you through so that you know that this Worse should be foundation if you want to have dominion, okay? It has all the elements of having dominion because you can't have dominion without first having these things in your life. And it starts with a desire, a desire. Man, I'm telling you, in Mark chapter 7, uh, I have to go to the main thing which I need to tell you, but I, you know, the scriptures are coming out. I need to just show you. In Mark chapter 7, ah, do you know your heart above all is deceitful? There are many wrong desires in your heart. There are many wrong desires. The Bible says, verse 21, Mark 7, 21. For from within, out of the heart of man proceeded evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murderers, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, and evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is the heart from a biblical perspective? The Bible tells you that from the heart all these things come out. From the heart. Where is this desire that God wants you to have? It is in your heart. You need to have this desire in your heart. That means your heart once it has a desire, it begins to drive your behavior, drive your walk, drive the way you talk, drive your everything. Because we have the wrong desires in our heart, today we are driven in so many directions. That's why God said very clearly when I was with him, one thing, one thing. Child of God, decide one thing. One desire, one desire you're going to have. Leave all the rest. You have tried loving the whole world and they've, you know, dug a deeper pit for you. But now we are going to have dominion. Let me take you to what I want to speak to you and what the Lord told me to speak to you in 1 Samuel. Can we go there? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ranto mobroco diente. Let's go to 1 Samuel. And in 1 Samuel, Yeah, 1 Samuel, we are looking at 1 Samuel and I'm going to go straight to where, uh, you know, the Lord led me to talk to you, but you can read on. But basically, you're looking at Judges, you're looking at, you're looking at Joshua, you're looking at Judges, you're looking at Ruth and then you're looking at Samuel. And when you look at the book of Joshua, you're looking at a people who are very obedient, who are walking in unity, who were obedient to a leader and they began to conquest in every direction. Then you're looking at the book of Judges. You're looking at people who started getting rebellious, who started doing their own thing. They began to think, okay, we'll do our own thing. They forgot God's laws. They forgot everything. And then you began to see one judge after the other. People sinning, then God raising a judge, bringing them out. They stay okay for a little while. They go back to their same vomit and they end up even more enslaved. And you saw their enemies started winning over. In Joshua, as long as Joshua was alive, victories, victories. They were moving in faith, getting victories. And then finally, now you come to the book of Samuel. And in the book of Samuel is, is really brilliant because you see for the first time that Samuel is the last judge and the first prophet. And then you see he appoints the first king. And then after that, you see that now we have David, who is God's elected king, whom God said, I'm going to establish your throne forever. So that's in synopsis. So why am I telling you this? 
because remember to have dominion is what God's plan for you and I so I'm going to take you to a short story in the book of Samuel 1 Samuel if you can open your bibles quickly 1 Samuel verse chapter 7 we are going to read from there and just to give you an understanding of what happened we have Eli who is the priest we have his two sons who are wicked we have Eli who is sitting as a priest not restraining his children these are the priest who are supposed to minister before god but they are doing all kinds of wicked things their morality is high uh, people uh, you know they are doing they are doing injustice with the offerings of god and there's just chaos and all of a sudden they decide the the philistines come and they attack the israelites and when they have this battle we can look at it over here actually you'll need to look at it yeah you'll have to actually go to chapter 4 and over here it tells you that now israel went up to battle against the philistines and encamped around ebenezer and the philistines encamped in afek then the philistines put themselves in battle array against israel so i want you to see this was the backdrop and now israel goes to fight against the philistines note that there is already a prophet an established prophet samuel but there is no inquiring no understanding and remember at that time prophets signified the word of god so we see that israel never when asked never inquired when we have an established prophet established voice of god in their country but they went and they decided to fight for one good some good reason and then they say in verse 2 and when they joined the battle israel was defeated by the philistines who killed about 4000 men of the army in the field so 4000 people died but i want you to read on and see what happens verse 3 and when the people had come into the camp the elders said why has the lord defeated us today before the philistines ah uh, is not this the same thing that we say in our hearts we may not vocalize it but we definitely say when we fail when something happens wrong do we not get up and say why has the lord not given us victory remember the ark of the covenant was with them the prophet was with them and yet they lost so what what they do is they do something really amazing So this is what they do. They say, "Let us bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord from Shiloh, that when it comes among us, it may save us from the hand of our enemies." So they are referring to the ark of the covenant because the ark of the covenant was a source of power. It it literally had the presence of God. So they are saying, "Let's bring the presence of God and let's go, and now we will have victory." So what do they do? They go and they get. uh the the ark of the covenant they get it all though and and this is what happens basically the philistines they get very scared because they know the last time the egyptians died very badly you can read that in 5 6 7 8 9 mm-hmm. but this is what really happens in verse 10 the philistines get scared somebody gets up and says don't get scared you know fight as one man fight mm-hmm. and these guys in verse 10 it says so the philistines fought and israel was defeated once again and every man fled to his tent and now the bible says there was a great slaughter and 30000 soldiers died so first four and now 30 34 in all why because they assumed that if they have bring the ark that just because they believe the ark has the power that the power of the ark is going to set them free and this is a very good illustration for all of us many of us believe that we have the power that is within us is greater than the power and that is outside he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world i am the temple of the holy ghost yet when you go to face your enemies you have a disaster this is because we assume that just because we know something that power is going to manifest in our life Brothers and sisters I want you to lay the foundation today for domination for dominion in every area of your life it is not just that you know the word of god you need to have a relationship with the word of god you need to have one desire to dwell you need to have one desire to behold and you need to have one desire to inquire you need to seek 
the one desire that is Jesus himself because like these guys they thought they'll just bring the presence and now they'll win the victory and they lost even worse i can tell you in my life also there are many times i stood up and i thought that's word i have i know and it worked and it did not and it i can assure you it was not because the word did not have power to do what it says it does it's just that at that time i didn't have one desire i had a many other desires roaming in my heart can i tell you child of god you need this one desire i know it sounds it may sound foolish you may need many things but can i tell you it's just one thing you need you just need one desire and that is for loving jesus like you never loved him before this heart can be more than filled with just one desire if you have this one desire what does he say seek ye first the kingdom one desire everything else will be added everything else will be added you don't need many things this is where the enemy has kept us busy he's made us have a lot of desires desire to succeed desire for a new house desire for a new car desire for children desire for this desire for that desire for my marriage can i tell you just one desire <laughs> and you're going to have your prayers answered you're going to have your blueprint for your life because you're going to see visions and have encounters and you're going to be evil even be able to inquire of god and be able to solve problem now tell me if you have these three things in your life want you be in a position to have dominion one desire again i'm telling you one desire it's all connected to one desire but i want you to see these guys lose terribly okay and this is what many of us do we presume and we assume you know you should never have the sin of presumption i think somewhere in 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 psalm 19 the sin of the sin of presumption is you know we presume something and we decide that you know let's just go ahead at it and maybe god will work it out because somewhere it is written and then when it falls flat then we get upset with god don't presume anything don't presume look at this psalm 19 yeah thank you jesus verse 12 who can understand his errors cleanse me from secret faults ah keep your servant also from presumptuous sins let them not have dominion over me then shall i be blameless and i shall be innocent of great transgression let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight o lord verse 12 who can understand his errors ranto mobroko db if you read this from verse 7 you'll get blown <laughs> can i read it the he starts by saying the law of the lord is perfect converting the soul then he says the testimony of the lord is sure making fools wise or making wise the simple verse 8 the statutes of the lord are right one day we'll go through all of this the commandment of the lord is pure enlightening the eyes the fear of the lord is clean enduring forever the judgments of the lord are true and righteous altogether more to be desired are they than gold this is the same david who said one thing i desire he realized he realized that he did not need anything he did not need prayer to win battles he didn't need prayer to overcome mountains giants nothing he just needed one desire and he's writing all this about the word of god he's saying more to be desired are they than gold yea than much fine gold sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb moreover by them your servant is warned and in keeping them there is great reward and then he goes to say who can understand his errors cleanse me from secret faults keep your servant also from presumption sins let them not have dominion let not presumptuous sins this is where the israelites presumed let's bring the ark hey we got jesus we believe in jesus this problem cannot happen and then you pray and nothing happens why because there's no dwelling you begin to shout scriptures and what happens nothing happens why because there's no beholding god 
is here to give us dominion, but we are going to have it His way or we are not going to have it. I'm telling you, this is as plain as it gets. That's why we are laying the foundation today. But I want to show you what they did. Now, they lose horribly, okay? We are going back to Samuel. They lose a battle horribly. They've lost it. People are dead. But now look what Samuel does. And this is what God told me to tell each one of you, including myself. For the next 25 days, we are going to go on a fast. Okay, we are going to go on a fast. And it's because of this scripture that the Lord led me to. And here the Lord, uh, the Samuel, who is the prophet of God, he comes and he says, In verse 3, then Samuel spoke. I'm reading from 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 3. Then Samuel spoke to all the house of Israel, saying, If you return to the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the foreign gods and the Ashtoreths from among you, and prepare your hearts for the Lord, and serve him only. And he will deliver you from the hands of the Philistines. So long story short, the Philistines captured the ark. The ark bashed all of them. And, uh, but they were still in captivity because the Philistines won the war. Now he says, you want victory? I'm telling you how to do it. He says, return to the Lord with all your hearts. And then he says a word which just struck me like lightning. He says, put away your foreign gods, your asteroids among you. And prepare your hearts. Can you all underline that word? Prepare your hearts and serve him only. One desire. Prepare your hearts. You know, when I began to look, and if you read the story, they did that. And on that day, something amazing happened that set the stage for all. After that, they began to get all territory. And, you know, you'll begin to see in verse 14. Uh, let me just read this and then I'll explain it all together. OK, so here you see they all agree. They start fasting in verse six. So they gathered together. They drew water, poured it out before the Lord and they fasted that day and said there, we have sinned against. Finally, they acknowledged it. We have sinned against the Lord and Samuel judged the children of, Is of Israel. Now what happens as they are seeking the Lord? Because the Philistines heard that all of them gathered together at Mizpah. So as they are seeking the Lord, in verse 8, the, in verse 7, the Philistines came against Israel. And now the children of God were very scared. Because remember, they are not come for a war. They came to seek God. So they don't have even their weapons with them. They have nothing. So this is what the children of Israel tell Samuel in verse 8. So the children of Israel said to Samuel, Do not cease to cry out to the Lord our God for us, that he may save us from the hands of the Philistine. Now look at Samuel. He begins, he offers a lamb, offers it as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. Then Samuel cries out to the Lord for Israel. And the Lord answered him. And as Samuel was offering the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. Look at this. But the Lord thundered with a loud thunder upon the Philistines that day and confused them so that they were overcome before Israel. And if you go quickly in verse 13, he says, So the Philistines were subdued and they did not come anymore to the territory of Israel. Now he says the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. Verse 14 tells you the cities of the fam of Philistines that had been taken from Israel were restored back to Israel. Ekron, Gath, Israel recovered its territory from the hands of the Philistine and there was peace between Israel and the Amorites. Can I declare over your life that when you do this word, when you prepare your hearts and repent that everything that was taken from you, your health, your wealth, your providence, your relationships, your peace in your life, it will start being restored when you begin to prepare your hearts. And I just want to talk about that one word, prepare your hearts. It's very critical. You know, most people think that you just repent and in one day it's going to happen. No. Look what he said. Get ready. Number one, put away your Ashtaroths from among you and your foreign gods. Return to the Lord with all your hearts. And then he says in the same verse in three and prepare your hearts for the Lord. Do you know 
when people start sinning it is not that they just get up and sin because they want to there's a reason why people slide down the slide of sin it's because they were not careful to prepare your hearts they did not prepare their hearts over and over in the bible the same theme is portrayed whenever you don't prepare your heart you are prepared to sin against god that's why preparation of your heart doesn't happen in a day that's why we are taking 25 days to prepare our hearts for the dominion that god wants to bring and i believe in these 25 days if you want to get uh you know with us on this fast we are going to put a number right down and if you want to join us it's going to be just one meal i am not going to tell you what you need to give up you need to know something that really hurts you that's what you need to give up okay if it is media and all that you can give it up but also make sure you give one day's food as an offering to the lord okay sacrifice it sacrifice it so that your body knows that it's being deprived of something because there's another desire that has to overwhelm all your other desires okay so the goal is one meal it can be your evening or your afternoon your dinner or your lunch it's up to you what you want to do but you, besides the meal if there's something that's really taking up your time fast from that but that's additional don't take away the meal that one fasting of a meal is very important that is going to trigger uh, breakthroughs because we are preparing our hearts remember the word of god says because they did not prepare their hearts and samuel the prophet is teaching them that he says listen you need to return to the lord with all your hearts put away your gods your foreign gods and prepare your hearts you know i've been meditating on that word prepare your hearts and then i began to find this word everywhere in the bible because people never prepared their hearts that's why they ended up doing things even they would never imagine they could do you know the bible tells you if i can go there this is so important this is so important for all of us i hope you are getting this can i just tell you what the word prepare means the word prepare means to establish fix apply it's something where you're doing a deliberate effort for a prolonged period of time this is preparation okay preparation is not one day that's why we are taking 25 days and that's why i'm explaining to you many people don't want to do evil but do you know why they do evil why they break covenants why they break the word of god and still get married to wrong people why they do things is because they have never prepared their hearts so when the day of temptation comes they just fall for the other way and they go the other way but if you look at a man or a woman who has prepared his heart if you study the book of daniel if you study the book of joseph of of life of joseph you see daniel because he had prepared his heart he had committed in his head that he is not going to violate god's commands when the time came where he had to choose and trust me he is in a foreign land and he needs to eat all these these unclean things and he says listen try us out give us just vegetables take a shot at it we know our god if we do this what god tells us all your good food is not going to make us as strong all the food that you think is going to make you know all these guys strong we will have exactly the opposite what our god tells us and we are going to be stronger more radiant more beautiful more everything this is when you prepare your hearts this is when you know god's commands this is when you take time to find it so preparing your heart if you don't prepare it when the day of checking comes you will just compromise you will do this is the reason why the israelites even though they were given the command to have dominion at every point in their life they were found as slaves because they never took time to prepare their hearts you can study it in the books of kings there is a very very good example in the book of kings 2 chronicles 12 14 he talks about rehoboam that he did evil in his heart because he never prepared his heart to seek god it's written there and he did evil because he never prepared his heart to seek god and this guy started off well for the first 3 years all the levites came to him they supported him 
you know, a prophet came and just told him one word. He decided to obey. He did everything. But because he did not do a certain, uh, he did not follow the Lord over a prolonged period and set his heart in the right direction, he began to do a lot of evil things. And the Bible says that he began to do evil because he did not prepare his heart. Could it be that because we have not prepared our hearts, that's why we have our hearts are full with all wrong desires. That's why we cannot have dominion in our life. So I just want to end right now. And if there's anything else, I'll continue it on the fireplace. But I want you to take just this one thing. One thing have I desired, okay, is to seek God. And I showed you that we need to dwell, we need to behold, and we need to inquire. I showed you what is dwelling. If you, once you dwell, you remain, you, your prayers get answered. Then I showed you what is beholding, to actively see like an ecstatic seer. That's what it defines. And then to inquire. So all these come from one desire, to seek God. So this 25 days till 31st of Jan, we are going to go on a, one, on a fast for 25 days. Okay, and we started actually on Friday, so that's why I'm counting 25 days. And just one meal, okay, and you need to let us know. The phone number will be written there. If you want to be part with us and join us on this fast, you let us know. We will send you the instructions what to do, okay? But I leave it totally to you. But this is the word that God told me. If you want to see a manifestation of God's supernatural power in your life, in your family, that the limitations that have been put on you, the yokes that have been on your life, the sickness, the disease, and all the financial problems lift up, you need to do what Samuel did. He told them, put away your foreign gods, return to God, and start preparing. Preparation needs time. It cannot happen on a day. That means you need to be singly focused. That means you need to pursue. You need to seek after that one desire that God wants to put in your life right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I could say so much more, but I'm going to save it. I'm giving you this instruction and I want to end now because I want you to obey it. And as we go on, Sunday to Sunday, we are going to bring what God is going to show us. So I pray God that you are ready to walk with us in this season because I believe that dominion is what God wants us to walk in. Remember, God did not create slaves. He made man and he made him ruler over everything and he wants us to have dominion. That means the world can have it their way. We are not interested. They can run up and down with all the viruses they want. But we want to be on a rock. We want to be on the rock that is Jesus Christ himself. And we want to live the abundant life that God has kept for us. So shalom to you. God bless you. And uh, don't forget to write in to us. Leave a comment if this word blessed you. And if you want to be a part of this, 21, this 25 day fast, we are going to leave a number here. Write to us and instructions will come to you. And I believe that this foundation that God wants us to have to return and prepare our hearts is very critical for what is going to come because when it comes that's not the time we need to jump up and say oh it needs to work no we need to dwell we need to behold and we need to be inquiring with one desire and then we are going to see a manifestation of God's power in our lives so God bless you, we love you, and see you next Sunday. Amen.